Per, I thought we were supposed to be improving this place. Well, look at it. I mean, there's a hole over there. There's a hole over there. There's a hole over there. Uh, uh, excuse me, um, sorry about this, but I think there's a slight chance that I may have died. Wait, what are you doing here? Demons aren't allowed on this level. Oh, no, no, I'm not a demon, I'm just- Oh my gosh, the temp I ordered, finally! The temp? The temp! Finally, after 1,825,911,238 hours without a break, I get a vacation! Oh, the moon, here I come! You wanna go to the moon? You've never been? It's the one place near Earth where nobody has ever died. No ghosts, no demanding restless spirits, just a peaceful wasteland of rest, relaxation, and rock collecting this over 300,000 kilometers from the nearest soul. <sighs> Can't wait. You'll need this scythe um, and this cloak but for company policy. And I'm sure Lady Elderdo can provide any training you need. She clearly believes she knows what's best for everyone. Why you, you insolent. Well, goodbye. Death is going on vacation. You know, between this and Discworld, I'm starting to think Death isn't that good at his job. Oh, a perfectly nice guy. Just not that good at his job. My apologies, Lady Elderdo, as I'm sure you know, staffing is an issue here, and we're all doing our best under very difficult circumstances. Now, if you've got a complaint, Form XG-532-7 can be filled out, and... Yes, I've got a complaint. Death Scythe allows the user to teleport to its location after it's been thrown. It allows the user to possess the living. Oh, where's this coming from? And have you ever wondered how Death knows where everybody is at all times? There's a map on his side. Who knew? And using the map, you can teleport to the location of any ghost you've previously met or any person you've previously possessed. Someone much more confident than I am was decisively controlling my actions! <laughs> Actually, this goes quite a way to explaining why Death is so bad at his job. It's the Scythe doing all the bloody work. Flipping Death is the spiritual successor to Stick It to the Man. Just in case you were wondering why it looks weird and two-dimensional. To possess someone, you need to have enough ghost critters. Just one small problem, you have to catch the boggers first. Then you just get in close, hold the triangle button, and voila! Oh yes, that is an amazing wolf! It'll tear me apart for sure! Glad you're so... 
excited about this? Can't wait! You can also mind read living people that you possess. I sure do wish I had a chainsaw. You're big into chainsaws, huh? Don't judge me, in a voice. Throughout history, we mermaids have lured sailors to their death with our seductive song and dances. Oh, cool. Well, is it so wrong to want to speed that process up with a 50-pound gas-powered symphony of saw and chain? It turns out that death's main job isn't reaping souls, as you might expect. No, it's actually trying to maintain a semblance of order in the ghost world. And there is no end, seemingly, to the number of personal problems that all of these ghosts have, and they refuse to move on to the afterlife until you've addressed them. We're off to get married. We'll be home for tea. What? Again? What is that, number five? What was wrong with the last bride? What? Yes, I know my scythe is in one piece. Unlike death, I don't use mine to open jars of preserves. That's how we broke his, you know. Clever manipulation of both the ghost world and the living world is required to sort out all the various ghostly issues that crop up. But sometimes the solutions to these puzzles can be a bit obscure. Oh my goodness! I mean, explain to me, on the face of it, how a guy painting a boat blue with his tongue helps you solve Lady Elderdo's murder. The obscure nature of some of these puzzles kind of reminds me of Broken Sword. In a good way. Completing main objectives advances the storyline, but there are also side objectives, little side missions for you to complete. And every time you complete a new one, you get a ghost card. I like the characters. I have trouble remembering their names, but that's not unusual for me. I have trouble remembering anybody's name. But I remember their problems. I remember how they speak, and I remember their situations. And I really like the sense of humor on show here. That's my conscience speaking. You're a bit late now, buddy. Uh, yes. This is your conscience speaking. Be nicer to Hocus! <laughs> oh, uh, no, I know I've drunk too much. You really are a f Oh my gosh, you are the first person whose mind I had to censor. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this one, because... It's a story-driven game, and it's a puzzle game. If I say too much about it, I'll basically ruin the whole thing for you. And the game is about eight hours. It took me almost eight hours to play all the way through it. And I got not most, but quite a few of the ghost cards. If you submit more time into the game and you try to get every single ghost card, it will go on for quite a bit longer than eight hours. <laughs> What? What's wrong? What's wrong? Vera's head is on fire! You didn't notice that? Hello? People say Vera's crazy, but at least she knows when someone's head is on fire! Ha! I'm gonna give Flipping Death a 7 out of 10. I thought this was a good game. I like the sense of humour, the characters, the puzzles, quite like the story. The frame rate is around 30 frames a second, which is a bit of a surprise because its spiritual predecessor, Stick It To The Man, that was, I'm pretty sure that was at 60 frames a second. A little bit of a surprise there, but it doesn't spoil the game. And I particularly like the way the puzzles are done. Yes, they're obscure, but they're not unsolvable. And the game has quite a nifty hint system, which allows you to pick hints off of the list depending on how far through the puzzle you've got. The hints that are unselectable, you, you've already done that bit, so you don't need to worry about it. I like the way the game gives you a little bit of help, but it doesn't tell you the whole thing at once. It gives you as much help as you need. Beera saw them long ago with it. <laughs> what? There is literally fire burning on the top of it! <laughs> so that's Flipping Death. 7 out of 10, good game, good puzzle game. 
Even though the puzzles are a bit on the obscure side, it didn't worry me. For me, it adds to the fun of the game. The game isn't exactly a marathon at about 8 hours, but you will get a bit more time out of it if you try to do more of the side quests. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go give someone a heart attack. Gotta get out of here before my heart figuratively explodes and literally just stops beating! Which, while less dramatic, would actually kill me! But it doesn't tell you the whole thing at once, so it gives you as much help as you need. Oh, my wrist! Ow! I was only holding that for a little while. I'm not resting it on the floor. I'm resting it on the edge here and I'm having to hold it up. Ow. Ah. I'm having to hold this thing together with one of these clips. These clips are what normally holds my green screen up. But if I don't hold it with a clip, then it, it just... It, it just does that. I factored everything into the side's design, except that. 